In this video, we will give an introductory overview of the red eye and list some of the common etiologies. Our objectives are as follows. First, to identify what exactly is red when looking at a red eye. Second, to identify where the redness may be located anatomically. And finally, to learn some of the different etiologies of a red eye. Not surprisingly, blood is responsible for the redness in all red eyes. Clearly, the distribution of blood is different in these three pictures. Being able to better characterize these differences is an important step when forming a differential diagnosis for patients with red eye. Before moving further, it will be useful to quickly review some basic anatomy. Understanding the anatomy of the eye is essential to understanding the possible etiologies of a red eye. The cross-section of an eyelid on the left demonstrates the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva is a thin, clear structure containing blood vessels that covers the inside of the eyelids. This portion is called the palpebral conjunctiva, as well as the sclera, the white of the eye. This is called the bulbar conjunctiva. The 3D projection of an eye on the right helps us identify the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is the space behind the clear cornea at the front of the eye and in front of the colored iris. The anterior chamber is filled with a clear fluid called aqueous humor in normal circumstances. Determination of the anatomic location of blood in a red eye is one of the first branch points in forming your differential diagnosis. In the top image, you can see that blood is in the conjunctiva within prominent or dilated superficial vessels. This is a good example of conjunctival injection. In the middle image, the blood is outside of the conjunctival vessels and between the sclera and the conjunctiva. This is an example of subconjunctival hemorrhage. In the bottom image, the blood is within the eye and pooled in the anterior chamber. This is an example of hyphema. Next, we will review each of these entities in further detail. We will start by going over conjunctival injection. As a reminder, with conjunctival injection, the blood is within conjunctival vessels. It is important to note that pathologies from different anatomic origins can all manifest with conjunctival injection. Several different mechanisms can lead to conjunctival injection, including inflammation, irritation, infection, and increased blood flow. Conjunctival injection can be further characterized by the geographic pattern of the redness. The top image shows diffuse injection throughout the entire conjunctiva. The middle image demonstrates sectoral or focal injection, injection limited to a specific area of conjunctiva. And finally, the lower image shows ciliary flush, a ring of injection of the conjunctival blood vessels surrounding the cornea. Typically, ciliary flush is seen with inflammation of the iris or corneal insult and is not typically seen in run-of-the-mill conjunctivitis. Understanding these patterns can help narrow your differential. Next, we will review some of the common and salient etiologies of conjunctival injection, starting with pathology of the lids and lashes. On the left is an image of blepharitis, which is an inflammatory condition affecting the eyelid margin. This causes flaky debris to build up on the lashes, which irritates the conjunctiva. On the right is an image of postseptal orbital cellulitis, which is an inflammation of soft tissues of the eyelid, which extends beyond the orbital septum posteriorly. In this case of postseptal cellulitis, the conjunctiva is red due to bacterial sinus infection invading the deeper soft tissue of the eye. Obviously, pathology within the conjunctiva can lead to conjunctival injection. Conjunctivitis, which is inflammation of the conjunctiva, may be caused by many different organisms or environmental components, including viruses, bacteria, and allergens. The severity of the injection and the amount and the character of the discharge depends on the specific etiology of the conjunctivitis. Learning the associated symptoms for each condition is helpful and will be discussed in more detail in a further video. Scleral pathology can also cause conjunctival injection. This pathology may be isolated to the eye or associated with systemic autoimmune conditions. On the left, you can see superficial appearing sectoral inflammation of the vascular network between the conjunctiva and the sclera. This is a good example of episcleritis. On the right is an image of scleritis, which may present with focal or diffuse injection and may be associated with thinning of the underlying sclera, causing the violaceous tint we can see here. Corneal insults can also lead to conjunctival injection. On the left, we have an image of keratitis with corneal ulceration. This is due to infection or inflammation of the cornea due to loss of corneal epithelial integrity. Common causes include poor contact lens hygiene, viral, fungal, or bacterial pathogens, or systemic disease. The middle image shows keratoconjunctivitis sicca, or dry eye. Dry eye causes inflammation of the conjunctiva and cornea due to tear deficiency, and is typically caused by the environment or lacrimal gland deficiency. And on the right, we can see an example of corneal abrasion, 
which is often due to traumatic injury, which causes corneal epithelial loss, severe pain, and conjunctival injection. The last anatomic area we will touch on for conjunctival injection is the anterior chamber. On the left, we can see acute angle closure glaucoma. Acute angle closure glaucoma is the result of an increase in intraocular pressure due to a sudden closure of the anterior chamber angle by the adjacent iris. This increase in pressure causes pain, a fixed pupil, and conjunctival injection, and often occurs with ciliary flush. On the right is an example of anterior uveitis and iritis. This is due to inflammation of the iris and or the ciliary body. Ciliary flush is often seen in this scenario as well. That does it for common and salient etiologies of conjunctival injection. Next, we will look at subconjunctival hemorrhage. As a reminder, in subconjunctival hemorrhage, the blood is outside of conjunctival vessels and between the sclera and the conjunctiva. This causes the blotchy red pattern you can see here. Importantly, the blood is not inside of the eye. Subconjunctival hemorrhage is due to the rupture of conjunctival capillaries. Common causes include hypertension, valsalva, trauma, and blood thinners. Subconjunctival hemorrhage can be drastic appearing, but the hemorrhages themselves often do not require treatment, they resolve spontaneously, and they do not affect vision. Lastly, we will review hyphemas. A hyphema is the presence of pooled blood within the anterior chamber of the eye. Thus, a hyphema is a true intraocular hemorrhage. Typically, hyphemas are due to blunt trauma to the eye, which leads to tears in the highly vascular iris. The level of hemorrhage may vary from just a small collection of blood in the bottom of the anterior chamber that may be hard to appreciate without the use of a slit lamp, to a more significant bleed that may be clearly visible with the naked eye, as is the case in the picture on the right. Hyphemas may even be so large that they fill the entire anterior chamber with blood and block the view to the iris. You may have noticed that the eye in this image also has significant conjunctival injection. This is because of elevated intraocular pressure and associated inflammation. So in conclusion, we learned that blood causes the redness in red eyes, and that this blood may be located in three different anatomic locations, within prominent conjunctival blood vessels and conjunctival injection, outside of conjunctival blood vessels and between the sclera and conjunctiva in subconjunctival hemorrhage, and finally pooled within the anterior chamber in hyphemas. We also covered many of the common and salient etiologies of red eye in brief. For a more detailed review of these etiologies, please view the other video lectures located on this site.